Dear friends, welcome to another episode today in the military world. In this video, we will discuss the progress of the Israeli invasion that culminated in the siege of the city of Gaza. With the siege now completed, what comes next? On October 28, 21 days after the terrible attack carried out by Hamas terrorists in southern Israel, the Israel Defense Forces launched a large-scale invasion of the Gaza Strip. According to Lieutenant General Herz Halev, the chief of the Israeli General Staff, only through an invasion of the area can Israel achieve the complete destruction of the Hamas terrorist route, since only aerial attacks are insufficient to ensure the neutralization of all the firmly entrenched terrorist elements inside Gaza. For obvious security reasons, Israel did not provide details on how the invasion would unfold. However, the analysis of photos and videos gradually revealed the direction of that advance, with three columns moving simultaneously, one along the coast, another along the Israeli Sinai border, and a third to the south of the city of Gaza. It was this third column that, on Thursday, November 2nd, surrounded the city of Gaza from the south, preventing terrorists from entering or leaving the sea. As I've mentioned in other videos on this channel, the siege of that city was a central element in the Israeli invasion since it's in the city of Gaza where the main depots, tunnels, and command centers of Hamas are located. If Israel's goal is indeed the complete destruction of that terrorist group, the Gaza siege was a necessary step. With the city now surrounded, an important question arises. What will the Israeli Defense Forces do next? The most immediate and straightforward answer would be to commence a full-scale invasion of the city of Gaza. However, for Israel, it's still too early for it. By encircling the city of Gaza from the south, the Israelis prevent the entrenched terrorists inside from receiving reinforcements, weapons, and ammunition. It's important to note that the terrorists had been anticipating the siege and had prepared for this moment by stockpiling a massive amount of provisions within the city since the beginning of the conflict. Hamas had looted everything it could from the Palestinian civilians in Gaza, including fuel, food, and medicines that were stored in UN facilities and intended for the civilian population. All of this was stored in the only places that Israel cannot bomb with full force, the hospitals, which are filled with civilians. From these locations, weapons and ammunition are sent to the outskirts of the city of Gaza, where Israeli columns are currently positioned. All of this is reaching these locations through the extensive network of Hamas tunnels, with recent videos showing Palestinian terrorists attacking Israeli columns directly from these tunnels in the city suburbs. Therefore, if the Israelis were to simply advance now with full force towards the city center, they would face fierce resistance from Hamas with heavily armed terrorists, and most importantly, they are hidden behind hundreds of thousands of civilians who are being forcibly kept in the central area of the sea. At the same time, the Israeli rear is constantly being attacked through the aforementioned tunnels that reach the city's suburbs. In this scenario, the Israelis would be facing two combat zones, one towards the city center and the other in the rear view and supply lines, a type of combat that causes nightmares for any military command. Therefore, the next step for the Israelis at this moment is not to advance directly against the center of the city of Gaza, but to first ensure that the siege is truly complete and that the terrorists cannot escape or receive reinforcements from the Selt. And equally important is to locate and destroy as many tunnels near the Israeli rear as possible. With this accomplished, Israeli troops will be secure to advance towards the city center of Gaza. That's why Israeli military commanders have repeatedly stated that this war will be very long and exhausting because it will involve, in this initial phase, a genuine needle in a haystack search in a vast territory with dozens, potentially hundreds of tunnel entrances and exits scattered all over the area, each one of them needing to be carefully demolished to prevent armed terrorists with grenades, rifles, and RPGs from coming out, as is currently happening at this very moment. The Israelis have not given any hints about the duration of this first phase, which involves clearing the tunnels and reinforcing the siege to the south of the sea. However, considering the strength of Hamas in the area, with sources indicating that there may be 10,000 to 15,000 armed terrorists in the city, and the level of preparation of these highly motivated and heavily armed terrorists, the expectation is that this phase will take many more weeks. The phase of entering the city towards the center promises to be even longer and more grueling, 
as the Israelis will be facing terrorists cornered and hidden behind crowds of frightened civilians. As many Israeli officials have stated repeatedly, this will not be a quick or easy war, but it is a necessary one. It's not just about freeing Israel from the threat of Hamas, but also about liberating the Palestinians from a terrorist group that seeks nothing but war and destruction. זה מרחב שפיר, שממנו יצאו חוליה של נוחבה, שמונה מלוכלכים, זה הפיר, רואים פה בוודאות בטון בפנים. Why? 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 Huh?